Peace. Good evening. I'd like to welcome you back into another edition of the File Playland. As always, I'm a file player and I'm currently laying in my bed. Can't go to sleep. Um, but in the process of trying to get to sleep, just found out that the Giants have re-signed um, Leonard Williams to a three-year, $63 million contract. And uh, good for Leonard Williams. Um, kind of good for the Giants, too. They had to get this done uh, because it helps them maneuver as far as um, with the salary cap. Because even though he's making, uh, on average, $21 million a year, the fact that it's a bonus um, factored into that helps them save a million, $11 million this year. I'm not sure what it saves in the other years. Who cares? Um I've been the biggest um, opponent against uh, Leonard Williams. Probably you can find a, any Giants fan. I've never been a fan of his since USC. But um, to his credit, he had played really well last year. Um, not $20 million or $21 million well. But um, he also had the uh, Giants uh, over a barrel. They had to... Uh, extend him um to some sort of contract to try to save value and have maneuverability as far as um with their salary cap for this year but um you know uh it's more of a move like when you sign a defensive tackle or a uh, good running back or draft the premier running back like we did with Saquon Barkley. Those are moves that you make like with teams that are at the precipice of uh, contending for at least, you know, long-term uh, playoff position, if not, you know, Super Bowl contention. You know, and my, uh, my dissing of Leonard Williams and a lot of the moves that the Giants make is that we're nowhere near that point and, like, I would rather come from a team perspective of we're nowhere near the point, so let's try to build for the future. So that's why I'm kind of hard on them, you know. And I'm not like a typical, um, the New York Giants are, you know, the 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 Church of Rome or some shit. Like where a lot of, a lot of Giants fans are, kind of like treat them as if you know they have no flaws and they they're above being questioned, you know, because with this long term success, when we're really not. I mean, you know, I may sound uh, dire, you know, in my videos when it comes to the Giants, be because I think that perspective is not out there enough, and you know, that's why I'm so um, negative at times. But it's not for my not loving the team because, um, you know, I do love the Giants. I love the Jets too, but um, you know, my son's a big time Giant fan. He's not that much of a big Jet fan. He likes the Jets too, though. But um, I'm fifty fifty. Um, so I want to see them do well, you know. Um, another news, though, uh, more on the negative train, is that the Giants signed one of the people that I probably hated the most since I started doing draft stuff or like looking really looking into the draft because he was uh, either first or second year of me looking into the draft, um, and I thought he was a bum then, and it was uh, John Ross. And, uh, you know, I found this out, like, as far as the extension for Leonard Williams and, like, the fact that they signed John Ross to a contract. I'm not sure for how much. I found that out in the New York Post. And, like, they spoke blowingly, glowingly of both moves. Like, as far as John Ross being a special teams demon, he's not. John Ross is a bum. You know, uh, he's always injured. Um, People were dick riding him uh, in the combine because he, he uh, broke the, the record as far as speed goes. But uh, people forget the fact that he got injured while doing that. He only had one run in the 40-yard dash, and he got injured at the end of it. And the Bengals are stupid enough to draft him, if I remember correctly, in the first round. And he's been a bum ever since. Bust, sucks, injury-prone, tiny. Um, there were like a lot of good receivers in the draft that year, and they settled on that bum. Um, but now uh, he's on the Giants, and what are you gonna do? But uh, I mean, 
I'm not going to crush it too hard. I mean, like, because it's uh, not of much significance. And I'm hoping that it's not a lot of money that they um, wasted in bringing them in. But, uh, you know, actually, I could knock it because I don't like him. And um, they have a lot of other things that they could do with that money. Um, So we'll see. I mean, like, you know, would have rather have gotten a linebacker or. You know, finally start the building blocks to building a decent linebacker core, if you will. Because we don't have one. Blake Martinez is not a foundation for a linebacker core. Blake Martinez is a run-stuffing linebacker. Big difference. You know, we need three or four linebackers. We got, like, two. But uh, whatever. I'm not going to knock it. I do like the kid that we drafted last year from Penn State, even though we drafted him. Two rounds early because I thought he was a seven-round talent, but I still did like him. But uh, I think his name is Brown, last name Brown. But um, we do need help at the linebacker position. You could usually get linebackers um, at a bargain, and uh, we kind of didn't with Martinez, so that's why I kind of knock it, even though I, I do love Martinez as a player. But, uh, yeah, I'll keep you guys posted. The problem is that they should make me the GM of the Giants. I would have the Giants spinning like a top if I were the, the GM of the Jets or the Giants. You know, Joe Douglas is a decent GM thus far over, you know, over the span of one year. I do like, you know, I think it would be harder for me to assess free agents. I don't like uh, busting out big money on free agents unless it's uh, cornerbacks, <clears throat> Um, I would waste money on free agent linebackers because I think you could get them at at um, good prices. I wouldn't draft defensive tackles uh, very high. It's always been my philosophy. Very seldom do I think that there's a defensive tackle worth the first round pick. And this year is one of the rare years or uncommon years that there's not a defensive tackle in my eyes. That's a uh, merit a uh, first round pick, and that's me personally. A lot of people have two or three defensive tackles coming out of the draft in the first round this year, and I think they're bugging. But um, you know, I uh, I, I'm a stickler for certain things, and you know, if you don't respect it, you know, it is what it is, man. But like you know, I I think uh, if I were given the reins for the Giants. I would bring my man Stefan Martinez. Please watch his channel too, the Nick and Steph show. Um, they go live every day, pretty much. But um, I mean, Steph Martinez is probably one of the best sports minds in the whole country, and he's not even thirty years old. I mean, I, I'm I just hit forty, um, and I give Steph Martinez all the respect in the world. I, I thought I was re I had a really good eye for young talent or. For good ideas as far as blowing teams up. And Steph Martinez runs circles around me. I'm super proud of him. You know, um, li uh, limited to a wheelchair. But he's just got the greatest mind when it comes to all sports. But especially football and baseball. I mean, like, the guy's a genius. How he's not a scout or running a team at some capacity is beyond me. Like, the dude's a stud. Stud evaluator. Um, I can't say enough about him, especially with bat. I mean, like, I, I, basketball is the team I try to scout the least. I think I do okay. I do better than the Knicks scouting. Obi Tobin's a bust, but um, um, Steph, I mean, he's light years ahead of me as far as being a uh talent evaluator, talent evaluator with uh basketball. I can't even come close to him. I think I'm okay. Maybe we're somewhat close in football, but I mean, uh, he sometimes talks to me about, um, what he thinks of certain, uh, uh, prospects coming out of the football draft. And since he doesn't talk about it a lot, I think I have a one up on him, but then he'll drop a jewel on me. And it's like, Dan, this motherfucker probably barely watches like or uh, from the look of it, I mean, like, or from the way he talks, like, he doesn't talk that much about football prospects as much, but he probably got more insight on me on that department too, man. So much love to Steph. Baseball, I can't even touch him. Baseball, this dude, 
has the best mind in baseball. Period. Probably. I mean, he's amazing. Young prospects. He called prospects out four years before they even make it into the league, and 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 I'm somewhat okay on baseball too, man. With you know, when you're next to uh, Steph Martinez, I doubt there's a GM in the country that no or a scout in the country that out that you could put up against Steph and Martinez. You could put up five scouts, and I don't think they would be able to touch him. The dude's nasty like that. Make sure you guys check him out, Nick and Steph um, show. They're on YouTube, Facebook. Make sure you like the page too, if you could. Show them love. And uh, Nick's uh, no joke either, man. Nick's no slouch. Um, the and they used to have one of the be- the best radio show in New York, uh, Four Corners, or I mean, uh, Twenty Seven Outs. Best um, baseball show in New York, but you could put it up against any show in the country. All star team from hell, Nick, Emilio, um, Steph. Damn, I forgot the other kid's name, bro. He was nasty, too. What? I forget his name, bro. I haven't slept. Maybe it was Noah. I don't know. He's on my Facebook. But, anyways, man, make sure you go check them out, bro. They're uh, doing a good thing. I don't know why my uh, phone light turned on all of a sudden. Spooked me out. But, uh, Thanks for checking me out. Peace.